Today we're going to look at simple video editing tasks in a couple of different video editing programs. That is, today we're going to be using DaVinci Resolve and Shotcut. So as far as I'm concerned, the absolutely basic essential workflow for editing videos for YouTube comprises these sort of tasks. Importing video clips, arranging them in a timeline, cutting footage, joining clips together with transitions, adding titles or text, adding music, adjusting the audio, previewing that the project works, and then exporting in an upload-ready format. Of course, there's much, much more that can be done to edit a video, but the tasks I've listed here are what I consider to be the absolute bare essentials to create a watchable video. Some of the extra things we won't be covering today include things like stabilizing footage or object tracking, adjusting color and lighting, cropping and zooming, chroma keying, masks, multi-camera editing, text animation, or any other kind of animation. It's not that these things are necessarily advanced as such, it's just that they aren't basic essentials. Now I use DaVinci Resolve to edit my videos. I happen to be still using version 14 because I found later versions were too demanding for my hardware. I have a Ryzen 5 PC, but DaVinci doesn't really make proper use of the Vega GPU that comes with it. It's really important to note that whilst both of the programs we'll look at today are free to download and use, they are somewhat towards opposite ends of the market spectrum. DaVinci Resolve is aiming at video professionals, and Shotcut is more of a consumer level offering, although it's still packed with features. This video isn't an in-depth review, and it isn't exactly a comprehensive tutorial. Maybe the best way to think of this is if you've never edited a video before, here's a taste of the absolute basics involved. Before we start, I just want to introduce the basic concepts of non-linear video editing. Most modern video editors work something like this. There's a timeline, literally like the story, usually from left to right, of your video, or like a strip of film or videotape for those of you old enough to know what those things are. The timeline is usually divided into tracks, and you can often add more tracks if you need them. There's usually a place for you to import all of your assets, which are usually video clips or images, you can select items from your assets and arrange them in the tracks of the timeline in any order you like. There's usually a box that will show you a preview of your video and a selection cursor or playhead. The preview box will show you the video at the point where the playhead is placed. If you add more video clips into the timeline, usually if they're higher up in the track layers, they take priority over things below them. There's usually a way to select an object in the timeline and view its properties and alter them. Properties like perhaps the volume of the audio or the scaling of the video within the frame. There's usually also a set of tools that you can use for making changes to the objects in the timeline, such as adding a fade transition between two adjacent clips. And these tools also often allow you to add things such as text over the top of your video. And that's it. Not all video editing software has all of these things exactly in the same place as each other, and some of them have subtleties in the way they do one thing or another. But this is the basics. They generally all do something like this. So there are always multiple ways to do the same things in different software, but here's how you could do those things in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so first off, we're gonna try this in DaVinci Resolve. So just gonna launch that now. It takes a little while to launch on my computer. Okay, and we're gonna create a new project, and it's going to be called Acorns. And here we are in the DaVinci Resolve editor main screen. So just to introduce a few things, we've got a preview window up here which will show us our video. We've got the timeline down here. We've got a bunch of effects and transitions tools down here that we can choose from. We've got, this is the master bin here, so this is where all of our clips will appear. There's also this thing called a power bin where you can store things that you might use again and again. So I've got my uh, Atomic Shrimp intro there and various bits and pieces of graphics. The thumbnails will load in a second. Um, so things that you will use again and again, you can store them in there. We're not gonna be using that today. I'm gonna show you how to do these things from scratch, but that's just a useful feature in DaVinci Resolve that isn't in all of the other editors. So we're gonna to go to the master here and we want to bring in some clips. So I've prepared a folder here which has got three little video clips and a piece of music in it. So we could just highlight those, drag them into the master bin there, and they'd be in the project. Or, if we choose to, we can drag them directly down to the timeline and drop them straight on there. And that also creates them in the master bin as well. Uh, I think we'll actually do that, so we drag them straight to the timeline. So we've got these three video clips and it's put them end to end but we probably don't want them in that order, actually. So that's the one we want first, that's the one we want second. This little tool here in DaVinci Resolve, when that's switched on, 
it will select the audio and video together for a clip and it will keep them together. When that's turned off, you can move the pieces independently of one another. Not always a good idea, but sometimes useful. So, I'm going to have that switched on. Now DaVinci Resolve has separate video tracks and audio tracks, and again that's not standard across all video editors. You will find that some of them combine them into one single thing, some of them have an option to split out into separate tracks. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So I actually want this clip first before that one. So maybe I shouldn't have actually just put these all on the timeline. Let's take let's get rid of them. So I just highlight them and hit delete on the keyboard. And let's put them back in one at a time. So this is our opening clip here. But when we play it, we're going to see there's a little bit of tripod wobble at the start there, and we don't want the whole of that clip. So I'm going to go back to about here by just dragging the playhead around, and I think we'll start about there. So I want to cut this video about here. So we use the razor blade tool, click on it, and what we'll see there is that's cut that into two pieces, which can now be moved around independently of each other. But I don't want that first bit there, so I'm going to highlight that. Now if I press delete on the keyboard here, it deletes and shuffles up. If I press backspace on the keyboard, it deletes and leaves a gap. I actually wanted it the other way, so I want to butt that up to the start. So that's the start of my video. And I think I'll take this up to the point where I just start to pick up the bowl and then we'll cut there as well. We'll get rid of that bit and we'll bring in our next clip which is me putting the acorns into my shoulder bag and again we don't want the start of the clip here we want the bit where the bowl comes in. We'll cut there, we'll delete that bit and it shuffles it up. And then we'll go forward to the point where I've tipped those into the bag and again we'll cut about there. And then the third clip we'll take and we'll just now this one's got some some dog barking in the background so we'll just yeah don't want too much of that in fact we're going to be removing all of this audio but we'll leave it on there for the for the moment so I'll just go for just before I come into frame so about there going to highlight that bit cut it and then we decide where we're going to go to in the video, so it's going to be about there, I reckon. So, that's our three clips. Now I want to get rid of this audio and replace it with something else. So, now I need to take off that little chain link icon there. So just highlight the audio tracks, backspace to delete them, and they're gone. So we're going to put some music over the top of this. So, back to our little sample folder and we just drop in this mp3 file and again we'll cut that at the end there and cut it to the same length as the video so let's have a little preview of what that looks like good okay now there's some abrupt transitions between these clips here so we're jumping between sections rather abruptly. So let's put a cross dissolve in this one here. So we're just going to drag the cross dissolve effect there from the toolbox on top of that clip and you can see there what it's created. I'll just zoom in using the zoom tool here. You can see it's created a cross dissolve between this set of frames. So if I just step through that we'll see what, what happens there. Yeah, so that's good. And I can make that cross dissolve bigger or smaller just by dragging it around, but the default size is good enough. So we also want a transition here, but let's try something else. Let's go for a band wipe. I don't even know what that is actually. Let's just have a look and see. Oh no, I don't like that. So edge wipe. Let's try that. Yeah, that's good. So, well, it's not good, but okay. So, that edge wipe, let's just change the properties of that. I want that to go from top to bottom. So, I will change the angle to 180. 
which is just Da Vinci's way of saying which way round is it. And I also would like that to be soft as well, so we'll put the feather thing on there and we'll fuzzy out the border there by that much. And let's have a look and see what that looks like. There you go, George Lucas style edge wipe. Okay, now I think this audio might be a little bit loud, so there are several ways we can adjust the audio here. We can highlight it, we can just adjust the volume of the audio using the volume slider up here. Now in DaVinci Resolve, this waveform display here is actually quite useful. When it's like that, you know that's going to be too loud, that's going to be clipped. When it's like that, you know that's going to be too quiet. So you can actually, generally speaking, you can judge it by just looking at the waveform. You do still have to listen, but this is actually a very good tool for figuring out whether that is actually going to be about the right level. So, yeah, that's good. So, what else do we want? We want to put, on the end of the project, we want to put a fade out. So we want to fade out that video. So there's several different ways we could do that. We could put a keyframe in there and change the opacity on a gradient down to zero. But we can actually just do it, again, with a video transition. We can go for a cross dissolve. And if we put that cross dissolve there, it's actually just going to fade to the blank screen. It's going to fade to black. Now, because black is the default background for DaVinci Resolve, or at least it is the way I've got it set up here. But we also want to fade the audio out as well. So we go to Audio Transitions. And again, we can do a cross fade there. And that will just fade out the audio. And again, we could drag those so that they're longer or shorter, if we wish to, but I don't. Okay, what else have we got? So we want to put some text on there. And I'm going to put a little thing on there. I think we'll have a text object here that says this is five kilograms of acorns from my garden. So we'll go to titles. Gonna just add a text object there and get it in what we think is the right position. I don't know. There, I think. And we'll change the properties of this to say five kilograms of acorns from my garden. Okay, that's not very readable as it stands. So there's several different things we can do there. We could put a drop shadow on there to make that stand out from the background. We could put a stroke on the edge of the text, which would again make it readable. But I quite like to add a background. And so we'll put a kind of semi-opaque background there. I don't like that font much, so I'm going to change that to my favorite font for videos, which is HP Simplified. I'm just going to change that width again. Obviously, I don't want it in the middle of the uh, don't want it in the middle of the screen there. So we will just move that up to the top. I tend to put super titles rather than subtitles now because for one thing the YouTube subtitles live down the bottom here. The other thing is that YouTube sometimes puts an advert over the bottom third of the video. So if I put my subtitles down there they get obscured by the adverts. So I tend to use the thing I call I call these super titles and I put them up top. So that's about right. That's very big caption but we'll leave it as is for the moment. Um, and I think we'll just put a thing at the end here that says thanks for watching. So I could drag another text object in and do the same thing, or I can just copy. I didn't mean to move that. Or I could just copy this one and paste it. And it will paste to wherever the playhead is. And I think this one will just say thanks for watching. And again, we'll just change the width of the background piece there, the lozenge, to make it visible. Okay, and I think that's probably all we're going to do on this video. So that's everything we wanted to do there. I've adjusted the audio, I've added music. I'm going to preview the whole project now, so let's just play that in the preview. <laughs>
Good, okay, so I'm happy with that for the purposes of this demo. So now we're going to export that in a format ready to upload to YouTube. So we go to the Deliver tab on DaVinci Resolve. We wait for that to load up and we're going to export this now. So it's got a preset there for YouTube, but that's 720p, so I'm going to choose 1080p. I can change various things about the video output here. I can change the properties. It's kind of best not to mess around too much with this, but if you want to, you can. Yeah, I mean, you can do all sorts of messing around there if you choose to, but I choose not to today. We're going to choose the name of the file. It's going to be called acorns underscore da Vinci. And we're going to add that to the render queue. It wants me to tell it where it's going to go. This is just a file browser dialog, and I'm going to put that in my output folder. Okay, and there is the render job there. Hasn't started yet. So I'm just going to start render. And off it goes. And it's rendering kind of almost in real time. It's, it's probably about one and a half seconds per second of video. And it will slow down and speed up depending on how many things you've got in your timeline. So if you've got a lot of layers, you've got a lot of text objects, a lot of transitions, a lot of objects in your timeline, it will render more slowly than if you've got a fairly simple one like we have today. Okay, and that's done. So I'm gonna save the project. I just realized I've worked without saving anything. So we're just gonna save that project. We'll close that down. And let's go and find our video. So in my output folder, there it is, Acorns Da Vinci. Let's watch that and see what we ended up with. Okay, and so that's how you do that in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, now we're going to attempt the same project in Shotcut. So we'll launch Shotcut. Considerably quicker to load up. And we're gonna have a new project called Acorns. So we've got a timeline. We've got a bin up here where we've got, what they call it, a playlist here. So we've got a bin for our clips. We've got a preview window, various things to see filters and properties and so on. Let's get our clips in like we did before. So again, we're going to drag all four of these things into the playlist and it imports them. For some reason, it immediately starts playing them, which we don't want. So now we're going to drag that clip down into the timeline. And we can see that it's created the timeline object there. Now again, we want to get rid of the start of the video there. So I think we said we were going to go for about there, didn't we? And this we just do by using the split tool here. So we click on that and we can see that that's split that into two different videos. So now I can just highlight that one, hit delete and it deletes in place. The other way to do that, and this is the same as DaVinci Resolve, if you right click this, you can have remove and it will remove it and shuffle up, or you can have right click and lift and it will just take it out in situ. We actually want remove, so there we go. And, and I was gonna take that up to the point where I pick up the bowl. Now we do want a little bit extra on here and I'll show you why that is in a minute, but we'll split that there and then we get rid of that piece. Next, we've got the clip where I put this into the bag and we're gonna start where the bowl comes onto the screen like that. But again, we want a little bit of overlap and I'll show you why now. So we just split that there, we'll get rid of this piece and transitions between clips in Shotcut are even easier 
than they are in DaVinci. Actually all we do is just drag those so they overlap and it automatically creates a crossfade there between the two clips which is very very useful. So then we're going to take that, where did we say, we'll take that clip to about there but again I want a little bit of slack. We split, we get rid of that clip and then the third clip we'll drag in and this one it's just from before I come into frame so it's there and a bit of slack so we cut get rid of that bit and then drag that so we can have a little transition now this transition here we want to be different to the other one so we will choose a different type of wipe there for that one so we've got oh we didn't want bar horizontal that's vertical to me but never mind bar vertical and that was considerably easier in shortcut than it was in DaVinci Resolve that's interesting isn't it so let's have a look at our timeline now so we want to go So that's about where we ended last time, wasn't it? About there. So we'll cut, we'll delete. Now, we want rid of this audio here, so we're going to detach audio, right click detach audio on all three of these clips. We will now get rid of those audio tracks and now we've removed all of the natural audio from the video we're just going to drag in that mp3 file like we did before we're going to cut it there and remove now if we want to change the volume of this we add a filter so we click on it we make sure we're on filters and we add a gain and volume filter and that way we can actually see interestingly it doesn't change the waveform here but we get to see the levels in the level indicator here so we can again that'll do so we want to have a fade at the end of the video so we're going to fade the video out and again we do this with filters so we add a filter and it's just fade out video and we can see it's created a little gradient on the end there so we can see what's going on and again on the audio we're going to fade that out add a filter fade out audio and that was that simple so now I want to add some text to these pieces of video and text is a bit different in shortcut to what it is in DaVinci Resolve so in DaVinci Resolve, text is an object that you can drag onto the timeline and you can give it its own properties and its own length and fade in and out and so on. On Shortcut, text is a filter. So what we have to do is select the clip we're interested in and we would click filters, add a filter and add text as a filter. But that's going to add the text to the whole of this clip, which is not necessarily what we want. So a couple of different ways I think we can handle that. One would be to, well actually we could keyframe it. I think you can probably keyframe these effects and that would make it fade in and out at the right time. But that's more advanced than what we're doing at the moment. So what we're going to do is bodge it. Two ways we can bodge it. We could cut the video there and we could cut it there. And then we could just apply the text filter to this piece in the middle here that we want. Or, and I think this will be more elegant for us, I'm just gonna so it just happens that Wikipedia has a transparent PNG image that's in HD format. So I'm going to view that and it's there it is, it's not there. Uh, so save image into my demo folder. And then what we should be able to do is 
we'll add a video track and then we should be able to drag in our transparent PNG which has absolutely no effect but we can now add our text filter to this transparent PNG object that's on the next track up. Advantage of doing that means we can use it again and again. And we can change the font on this to HP Simplified. Oops, looks like I made that a bit too small, so let's size it back up. We can change the position. Now one thing we can't do on here is do drop shadows very easily or anything else to separate this out from the background. So um, you can do it by adding another text effect and offsetting it and putting it slightly behind this one. But I think what we'll do just for the sake of... So what we'll just do, I think, is just change all of this text to yellow to make it stand out a little bit. So, so we've got that text object there and this will enable us, I think, to copy it and use it for our thanks for watching clip near the end. So we'll just got a spare bit of clip there, I'm gonna get rid of that. So near the end here, so we're going to use this for our thanks for watching, and we'll just paste it in there. No, paste it into this. Alright, we'll paste it in past the end of the video, and then we will just drag that up to there. And then we can change this text to thanks for watching. Okay, so not quite the same workflow as DaVinci Resolve and perhaps a little bit more clunky. And some of that clunkiness is because I've never used this thing before. So some of what you're seeing here is perhaps awkwardness. It's just me being a bit fumbly with this program. Anyway, let's preview that and see what that looks like. Something's wrong with that text. Okay, something has gone wrong with this text, and I think that's where I copied and pasted. So let's just see if we can figure out what's going on here. Okay, I think that might have just been a glitch. Might have just been a glitch in the display. Okay, so let's now export this ready for upload. So we go to export, and again, there's a whole pile of presets here. We can dock this little window here wherever we like. So let's stick it over here. Um, that didn't really help actually. Let's undock it and deal with it as a separate window. So export. We're going to export. Well again we've got a preset here for YouTube. We'll have a look at advanced on here. Yeah why not. So we're going to export that into my output folder and we're going to call that acorns underscore shortcut save and it's created a job here and it's immediately rendering it and actually the speed of rendering here is pretty good what's notable about shortcut is you can actually carry on doing stuff on your timeline here while this render job is outputting. I'm not quite sure what happens if you change one of the things it hasn't rendered yet, but that's a, another story. Okay, that's complete. Let's go and find the video. So the shortcut file is a bit smaller than the DaVinci one. That probably means the quality is going to be a bit lower, but I did have control of that quality in the properties of the export filter there anyway. So let's just watch that one.
OK, so not bad. So for a simple editing task like we've just seen today, we can achieve very much the same results from either of these programs. Obviously, there's a lot deeper to go on both of these programs, but hopefully that's a little taste of just scratching the surface and trying to do the same kind of project in these two different things. So I hope that was a useful glimpse at these two different programs. Either of them is more than capable of providing the tools that you need for creating content for uploading to YouTube. So a lot of this is about choosing the learning curve that you like and choosing what you're comfortable with. If you like this or if you think I missed out on anything important, let me know in the comments, especially if you think I did something in a more complex way than strictly necessary. These are only two of the video editing solutions available completely for free, so I might do something like this again, maybe looking at a couple of different offerings, or maybe we'll take a deeper dive into one or the other of these two. I hope that was useful, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.